Hello and welcome to The Flow. Have you ever refused to participate in something? And no, I'm not talking about refusing to attend a concert or a party or some social gathering. I'm talking about a trend or a cause of the month or something else. Have you ever simply refused to participate? As I thought about this, I know I have. I think the clearest example for me is Twitter. I've never found this platform useful or interesting. What I have seen is a social media platform that basically gives permission for people whom you don't know to ridicule or shame others. Or, as a social science professor recently remarked, saying Twitter is a place where people throw darts at one another, which I think is a pretty good description. Now, be it a social media platform or some other negative aspect of society, these things can be seen as an obstacle trying to hamper Trinity's flow. Think of how obstacles are treated in a flow. Think of how rocks or something in a block of water tries to block the path of a flow. It simply moves around it and continues on its path. The flow refuses to participate. I wash away the past week. I gently remove the stains of fear, fear of the present and of the near future, knowing that Distress prevents a clear vision of the here and now. I cleanse past regrets and foibles which, in reality, no longer hold true power. I scrub away unthoughtful habits performed without intent, making gains or progress trivial. I wash away words spoken, secretly intended to boost the ego, designed to enhance a sense of personal importance. I bathe in the knowledge of strength found in gentleness, simplicity revealed by forgiveness, and laughter expressed in hope. I feel the freshness of renewal and the clean scent of restoration. I dry my hands feeling God's gentle, continual love, and that is good enough. In order to love God and neighbor, first learn to love a sparrow. Sparrows don't shun people and prefer to live close to human settlements because of the constant supply of food. Sparrows easily learn to eat served food when people started to build bird feeders. Sparrows play an important role in the ecosystem and are key players in the food chain. While adults usually eat seeds and grains, they're also known to eat insects, which help with pest control. In fact, they have helped save New York City's trees when they were being destroyed by inchworms. Sparrows teach us that even the most common among us have a unique role in creation, which is all around us. In order to love 
God and neighbor, first learn to love a sparrow. A healed relation to each other and to the earth then calls for a new consciousness, a new symbolic culture and spirituality. We need to transform our inner psyches and the way we symbolize the interrelations of men and women, humans and earth, humans and the divine, the divine and the earth. Ecological healing is a theological and psychic spiritual process. We must see the work of eco-justice and the work of spirituality as interrelated, the inner and outer aspects of one process of conversion and transformation. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh, for what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envies, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. How would you define greed? How would you define, in theological terms, selfish desires? How are gifts of the Spirit linked to interpersonal relationships? How would your life be different if you were led by the Spirit?
This passage from Galatians is a prime example of the church getting things wrong. The church, in order to sustain itself, and to enhance what might be called job security, defined sin as personal and created a system to scare and blackmail people into behaving in a way totally focused on the individual and individual salvation. The reality is that the church should have focused on the corporate structure of sin. Corporate meaning society and civilization with its addiction to greed, power, and might. And with the legalization of Christianity, an invitation came and the church gladly participated in greed, power, and might. It's taken almost 2,000 years, but our addiction and possession to the demons of greed, power, and might, which, by the way, have now come home to roost. All one need do is look at our behavior and participation in the destruction of our planet for profit our subjugation of one another, keeping some housed and others living on the street, our hoarding of resources to keep some fed and others starving with hunger. One group refusing to see that gun violence is harmful and the other living into the myth thinking they are from a John Wayne movie. We dismiss demons as a Hollywood invention or the irrational ramblings of Bible-thumping preachers. We have demons in plain sight, yet we justify participation with demons in the name of progress. The demons of greed, power, and might have enabled war against the planet, our ecology, and each other.
if we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. We pray, O oh God, that we may know you and love you, that we may rejoice in you. And if we cannot do so fully in this life, let us go steadily on to the day when we come to fullness of life. Meanwhile, until then, let our minds meditate on your eternal goodness. Let our tongues speak of it. Let our hearts love it. Let our mouths preach it. Let our soul hunger for it. Let our flesh thirst for it. Let our whole being desire it until we enter into your joy. May we see God in all things. May we find Christ in all suffering, and may the Spirit help us to move forward with compassion and truth. Let us walk in love. Let us go in peace.